This tutorial starts a series of videos in which we'll show some life hacks that might simplify the scanning process and considerably improve the final result. We will start from the scanning basics and then move on to more complex subjects. In this video, we'll scan some simple objects in geometry tracking mode. In geometry tracking mode, only the shape of the object is used to build the model and no markers are required. Color data is collected in the background and can be used to texture the model later on if desired. Essentially, during geometry tracking mode, the scanner takes many individual frames and then combines them into a 3D model, focusing only on the geometric features of the object itself. So when scanning the model, it is important that there is always geometric diversity in the scanner's field of view. Life hack number one, start scanning from afar. Prepare your workspace and remove unnecessary objects that may interfere with your work before scanning. It is best to clear an area of about 1 to 2 meters around the object beforehand. This will not affect the scanning process much, but it will make your work much more comfortable. Life hack number 2. Consider the shape of an object. Before you start scanning, it is important to analyze the object and choose the right scanning strategy. Does the object have enough geometric features? What is the best way to position it? How many scans will it take to scan the object from all sides? To better understand the process, let's look at this canister as an example. The canister contains a number of elements that are suitable for geometric tracking. For example, the handle and the neck create a unique geometry that can be used to build the model. The flat parts of the canister contain almost no data and therefore can cause tracking problems, but because of their relatively small size, it is always possible to keep some notable feature or one of the canister's corners in the scanner's field of view, thus creating reference points for the scanner. Even monotonous or repetitive elements can be digitized if some notable features of the object appear in the frame. When scanning, try to keep several surfaces in scanner's field of view and you will never lose tracking. But often, the object may have little or no pronounced geometry. For example, this pipe has a branch and it serves as a good reference point, but when scanning from the opposite side, this branch will not be visible and therefore the tracking may be lost. And yet you have to scan symmetrical objects quite often. These can be both everyday objects like bottles, dishes or vases, and industrial objects, rotors, propellers, gears, etc. In terms of geometric tracking, a symmetric object or an object without pronounced features looks the same from all sides, and therefore it is difficult for the scanner to merge the data correctly. In this case, obtaining a high-quality model can be troublesome. For example, this vase, while containing a lot of geometry, is symmetrical. So how can you help the scanner not to make a mistake? Life hack number three, use additional geometry. The easiest way to scan a relatively small symmetrical object is to use additional geometry. Simply put, you can add random asymmetrical data to a symmetrical object to help the scanner orient itself. A perfect sample of an additional geometry that is always at hand is the paper. Simply place the crumpled paper around the object and scan in such a way that part of the paper is always in the frame. It is important to keep the paper in one place during the scanning process. Avoid drafts and moving the paper. When scanning large symmetrical objects frequently, another practical solution would be a piece of cloth. Place an object on the cloth and crumple its edges around the object. The folds of the cloth will create a rich, asymmetrical landscape ideal for scanning any object. It will be nearly impossible to lose tracking and you will be able to concentrate on your work directly. However, when scanning with additional geometry, a small problem might occur. It can get difficult to separate the model from the geometry during editing. The problem of separation of the model also occurs when scanning on a table or floor, but the solution is easy. You simply cut off the surface of the table or the floor. The result is not perfect, but acceptable. 
in the case of additional geometry, this approach may lead to cutting off useful data. To simplify the post-processing and leave useful data, use the following advice. Life hack number four, place the object on a platform. To simplify scanning and post-processing, it is better to place an object on a small platform, ideally if the object is larger than the stand and covers it. The caps and jars, made of transparent plastic, things we often throw away without thinking, are good for this purpose. If everything is done correctly, the object will seem to float over the surface. The separation of the object and additional geometry will not be difficult and we will not lose a single point of useful data. Life hack number 5. Constantly change the position and angle of the scanner. In order to get a dense and full point cloud, we recommend you to constantly change the position of the scanner. A key mistake most beginners make is to hold the scanner steady vertically, like a glass of water filled to the brim. Meanwhile, smoothly changing the position and scanning angle is one of the best and easiest ways to dramatically improve the quality of your point cloud. The scanner projects a grid of light onto the object, and by constantly changing the tilt and position of the device, you can change the position of the grid as well, thereby making the data more diverse and the point cloud more uniformly dense. If you hold the scanner in one position, it will capture the same data over and over again. This increases the size of the scan and the processing time, giving no new information. The more varied your data is, the better the result will be. A single frame looks like this. Here are how a few frames look like when the scanner is in a constant position. The same number of frames but the scanner was rotated. Life hack number 6. Collect an adequate amount of data. Also, don't forget to collect a sufficient number of frames. Don't work too fast or too slow. Choose a calm, smooth, measured pace. Remember, data acquisition speed can vary significantly depending on the scanning mode and the power of your computer. This value is called FPS, frames per second and can range from 10 to 35 frames per second. The higher the FPS, the faster you can move when scanning. Watch the FPS, top left, and the frame counter, top center. Try to imagine that your object is put in a transparent cube. You need to take at least 500 frames for each side of a cube. If one side of the object has more details than the other, spend twice as much time on that area and get more frames. Don't forget the previous advice and make sure to constantly change the scanning angle. Properly collected point cloud should look something like this, dense and even. A proper 3D scan usually contains 2000 to 3500 frames depending on the complexity of the object. If you have to digitize an object with a complex surface, translucent plastic, dark or glossy surface, a longer scanning process is justified. Life hack number 7. Make overlaps when scanning from multiple sides. In most cases, you have to scan an object from several sides and merge the acquired data into a single model. It is important for the adjacent scans to have good overlap. In other words, two neighboring scans should contain enough common elements. This will allow you to orient the scans correctly with respect to each other and merge them seamlessly. The overlapping area of the adjacent scan should be about 20% and must contain any corners, bumps or other features of the object's geometry which will allow you to correctly align the scans to each other. Life hack number 8. Use markers to simplify the assembly of symmetrical objects. If the object is almost perfectly symmetrical, it may be difficult to merge the individual scans after post-processing, since they may contain two similar or repetitive elements. Inspect the object before scanning for minor manufacturing defects such as seams, splices, dents, etc. This will help you orient the scans correctly when assembling the model. 
If you have no such elements on your object, add reference points yourself. You can use small stickers, plasticine or even chewing gum. Adjust them in the right places where they will be visible in all scans. Once the scans are combined, you can easily remove these markers from both the object and the model. Lifehack number 9. Make sure Life 3D mode is on. Don't forget about Life 3D feature. Before scanning, make sure that this mode is activated. With the Alive 3D mode on, the scanner creates a temporary preliminary 3D model of the object, which allows you to evaluate the quality of the scan and pay more attention to problematic areas. It helps you save time on post-processing. This mode requires sufficient computing power and can lead to a decrease in FPS. Nevertheless, in most cases, Life 3 d mode significantly simplifies the scanning and preliminary assessment of the result. Lifehack number 10. Try to fill the frame with as much data as possible. The more data each frame contains, the easier it will be to merge the scans later and the more accurate the result will be. If there is not enough data in the frame, it makes tracking and subsequent post-processing difficult. If you scan a thin and tall object, it is better to lay it on the side and scan it with additional geometry. If the object cannot be dismounted, place other objects next to it. When scanning, try to keep as much of the screen in the green zone as possible. Lifehack number 11. Dim the light if you want to capture the shape of the object only. The object must be evenly illuminated from all sides if you want to capture its texture. But often it happens that only the shape of the object is needed. For example, most scans of industrial objects are never textured. If you do not need to capture the texture, try to minimize the amount of ambient light in order to improve the quality of your scan. Your scanner will work fine even in total darkness, but you don't have to go to extremes. Just dim or turn off the lights if possible. You can also close the blinds or curtains if it's too bright outside. Never scan in the sun. If the subject is outside, wait until evening or cloudy weather or use a visor. Lifehack number 12. Increase the brightness of the projector if you are scanning a dark object or in the bright light. Sometimes it is difficult or impossible to control light intensity. You might be scanning in a public place or outdoors. In addition, the object might be too dark and absorb the light from the grid. Increase the brightness of the projector by switching the scanner to dark object mode. These dozen tips may take some practice, but once you get the hang of these tricks, you should be able to scan most medium-sized objects with ease.